Hello, hello. My name is Phoenix Novell, and I am the author of the International Artistry Playbook. I'm a singer. I'm a performer. That's what I do. That's what I've always done. And I love every minute of being on stage. It's my passion. Music really is my life. I wrote International Artistry Playbook to help performers understand the business side of music. I came overseas when I was 23 years old. I had big dreams, huge ambitions, and I knew where I was going. I knew what I wanted. But I didn't know the business side to my talent. See, people brought me overseas because they want to make money off of me. They see an opportunity to capitalize on my talent. And if I don't see the opportunity to capitalize on it as well and build a steady, long-term career for myself, then I'm just performing. There's a business to this. And it took me a few years to really understand it, but now that I do, I want to share it with you. This book is dear to me because I've made a lot of mistakes on my journey abroad. I've been overseas for almost 10 years now, and I would really, really, really enjoy being able to help artists who have the same desires that I had back then to not make the same mistakes that I made. A lot of times you can learn from people who've done it before you if you take the time to find out what is really on the other side of the stage. Not just the bright lights, not just performing in front of hundreds of people, not just feeling like a star, but understanding what it's like to live amongst different cultures. Understanding what it's like to perform six nights a week with people who you've never met before in your life who have the same passion for music as you do. There's a business side to this that a lot of people who want to book you don't talk to you about. They just see a star. Oh wow, you know, this person can sing Beyonce, this person can sing Bruno Mars. And because we're singing music that the stars made popular, we're actually bringing more clientele to their venues. But what about what you're doing with your career? After the music stops, are you saving money? Are you still maintaining your relationships back home? Are you making the connects to keep you working overseas long term or are you just enjoying the ride? <laughs> Let's be real. There's a lot of business to be made if you think about it and not just feel it and perform. Because once the music stops, are you secure? International Artistry Playbook is meant to prepare artists for the what next, not just the journey. Because if you do lose your voice, or if you can no longer play with your fingers, you know, if you can no longer perform on stage, if you get sick abroad, where's your security? Did you put the right team in place that'll help you maintain long-term employment? Or did you just think, hey, you know what, let me just go and see where life takes me. Don't play craps with your career. And if you're 19 or 57, there's a market for you overseas to make money long term. So be smart about it. One of my favorite chapters of International Artistry Playbook is the reality. Because a lot of us, unbeknownst to us sometimes, live in a fantasy. We see this image in our mind of all the possibilities of being a star, all the possibilities of making those dreams come true. And we really don't evaluate ourselves and our potential truthfully. I pose a question to people when I say, ask yourself, I see this job opening. I see that they're looking for a singer. I see they're looking for a bass player or a dancer or a DJ. And then you look at the job description and it says, oh, you know, you need to be able to play this and have this ready and have these qualifications. And so you're so excited, but you don't really think about if you're really qualified to do the job. Because if you're not, then you enter a whole nother world of business. Because they're paying for flight tickets. They're marketing you. 
they're actually building a whole showcase based on what you said you can provide. Find out, truthfully. Ask your friends, ask family, ask trusted loved ones who aren't afraid of being real with you. Do you think I'm good? What do you think about my show? What do you think about my set? What do you think about my image? What do you think about me? Because once you hit the overseas stage and you get in front of hundreds of people who don't know you, who don't care about you, who have nothing to gain from you, you will learn exactly how valuable you are to the world. It can be tough to, to leave your comfort zone, to leave your friends and family behind, the ones who you know really go hard for you and get in front of people who really could care less unless you're giving them something that they feel like is valuable or worth their time or money. Early on in my career, I came overseas and I just was passionate. I wanted to perform. I wanted to showcase my talents to the world and I did not expect any negative criticism. I was a little delusional and unrealistic about my self-value to the outside world. People who weren't related to me, who could care less about me or my music and just wanted to be entertained. I learned a lot about business. I learned a lot about the importance of relationships, about having a team behind you that supports you. International Artistry Playbook is for musicians, it's for dancers, it's for DJs, entertainers of all kinds from all over the world. It's for you. People who want to pursue their creative passions and make money from it. There's a market for that, an international market. Because there's so many people in the world, no matter what their occupation is, that want to have a good time that enjoy music, that enjoy creative arts. But before you set yourself off on that journey, understand how to protect yourself. Make sure you have the knowledge. Make sure you have the team in place. Make sure you have the information necessary to not have to go through things that you don't need to go through. Learn from my mistakes. Let me tell you a little bit about me. I grew up very poor, grew up in a dysfunctional family, lost my mother to breast cancer when I was nine years old. My father's been in prison most of my life. And look at me, overseas, traveling the world, writing books, writing songs, loving every minute of my life because this is what I always wanted to do. So don't think for a second that because I'm sitting here, got my little, you know, my hair, my cap and everything, my nice fly shoes on, <laughs> that this is how I came out the womb. <laughs> It's not like that. I had a vision. And even though I was told by some family members when I was younger that I really wasn't much of a vocalist, that they couldn't see me going to creative performing arts high school, here I am. And there I did. And now, where am I going? To the top, because I'm a boss. Don't mean to sound cocky. But guess what? <laughs> it's what I'm made of. And when you know what you're made of, you don't have to ask for permission to be who you are. So if I don't do anything else, I want to inspire artists, creative people who have passions. Even if you like to draw, you know what I mean? Like paint, whatever you love to do, dance, sing, DJ, whatever it is that you love to do. Learn the business side to it. Because the people, who are now making a lot of money in that field once started where you are, not really knowing the business side of it. And they took the time and put the attention and effort into actually honing their craft because they saw a market. There's always money to be made. Inform yourself and make it or somebody else is going to. I enjoy writing. I did not know that I was going to be a writer. I didn't know I was going to write books. I've always written poetry, written songs. My mom gave me for my, I believe it was my ninth birthday, a typewriter. I was not. <laughs> I didn't want a typewriter. I wanted a Barbie doll. <laughs> I wanted a my size Barbie doll. And when she gave me the typewriter, I was just like, thank you. It was, it was, a, it was a cream typewriter with red buttons. And 
I was just like, okay. She knew. She knew that I had literature in me. And I wish she was here right now to see what I've done, what I've created, and, and, and be with me along my journey, you know? So I'm very blessed that she gave me that instead of a my size Barbie because it helped me understand the message and it helped me learn how to channel what was inside of me. And it comes out in songs, it comes out in books, it comes out to inspire. And that's what I want to do. I want to inspire people who don't necessarily have sources of inspiration to understand that you don't have to come from a place that's full of creative people to be creative. The International Artistry Playbook is not like a tell-all about the business because, you know, it's relative. There's so many gigs abroad. I basically hone in on the most important factors, like how to find gigs that you want, ways to actually market yourself, people that you need to possibly have on your team to help you avoid unnecessary pitfalls, you know, what to look for in a contract when you go overseas, you know, and again, true and honest self-evaluation so that you're properly prepared before you land and do the gig. One of the worst things I think an artist experiences that I've seen a few times while being overseas on contracts is being sent home because they did not fit the bill. They didn't know exactly what was expected of them. And sometimes it's easier for the agents or the client to cut their losses than to have you possibly diminishing the clientele of their venue. Then you put your whole life on hold back home because you didn't properly prepare for the gig and really assess if you were the right candidate for it. It happens sometimes but it doesn't have to happen to you. Be ready, because once you step overseas, you start to make a reputation for yourself. And if that reputation isn't good, that could actually harm you in the long run. Once again, it's your girl, Phoenix Novell, and if you wanna purchase my book, make sure you visit my website at www.phoenixnovell.com. That's www.phoenixnovell.com. I hope you enjoy it. I also have it on audio, which was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I thought I had a great speaking voice and that's why I could make my own audio book, but it's a lot of technical work that goes into making it sound really good. And I had some help with that and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Again, I am here to inspire all artists, all creative artists to pursue their passions because you were given the gift for a reason and don't waste it. Take care.